One last chance, Alex. Here you are. What can we do for you tonight? Hey, how y'all doing? Okay, there we You're go. Good. We've got you. What can we help you with? You said you had some friendly advice. Yeah, because like I'm one of the fans of the show, so like I don't know. Because I ran into atheist experience first, I see a stark difference between callers that are there for uh for strife versus uh clarification. So I want to clarify them in the clarification box. I want to clarify my clarification? Yeah, no, help too. us out with. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the thing, and this is something I think as 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 people as beings on the planet, we all need to accept. This is gonna sound grandiose, but just bear with me, right? It's always the extremist things, the extremist views of the extremist people that make anybody, whether it's extreme atheists versus atheists like yourselves who just want to have a conversation and get their truth, whether uh there's black folks that uh, I'm I'm black myself and I say this, okay. Uh there's black folks that protest very peacefully. And whether they're actual protesters or not, there are people that obviously have um, more uh, destructive means. I only mean this to say, as soon as I heard, because I was listening to y'all, but it's because I listened to Red Pill, and there's some things that are useful in there, as there is in certain things. But as soon as I heard Elliot Rogers and weaponizing against women, that's why I had to call in, because anything can be used as a BS reason to, 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 to hate on somebody else. But most of the core freaking, all right, just because I'm not the biggest fan of Christianity, but it does say in there to love all people. Everything else in there is still questionable, but that's in there. Here's my point. Small example. I had a small example, I promise. I was in Philly. Beautiful girlfriend, right? Uh, Light-skinned, you know, black woman, all that. Both of us working on point, doing the right thing. And the relationship ended. And one thing that I noticed is she kept wanting to go on and bear with me afternoon dates or daytime dates. Um, and she also, uh, you know, was not exactly, you know, feeling me in an intimate fashion, which is weird because of course we were seeing each other. Right. It turns out one thing I learned afterwards and this one red book, I was talking about it when oftentimes, not oftentimes, so oftentimes, unless it's a schedule thing, but oftentimes when a woman wants to do a afternoon or daytime date, um, She's looking forward to the interaction, the time with you, towards the food. But a nighttime date usually leads, we're trying to be polite here, but usually leads to more intimate things. And a lot of women, not all, but those women who choose to use the man for food will happen to take often more daytime dates to get that food without that stuff. I use that as a small example to say this. When I look at things that have happened in my life, whether from young child to trauma and I'll leave it at that to later on, at, at, believe it or not, at the, the hands of women, there are certain things that the red pill could have warned me about that I could have known about. And not for nothing, but I've got to say this. Even as men, we have different perspectives. Like um, uh, the one guy you have um, uh, on the show today, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, um, 6'5", um, you know, not in whatever type of way, but like, you know, you know a decent looking gentleman. There are certain ex experiences that no disrespect to him, he's not going to have. I myself as a six or two black guy are going to have different experiences. It's all going to be different. To some dude, they may not know what it's like to have a girl. Not, we all get turned down, but some mm. guys are not going to know what it's like to be made fun of in front of the whole school. All right. right? I, I, I want to I talk to you real quick, Alex, because I think you're talking about me with the six foot five guy, because that's I'm the only six foot five guy here. Um, OK, I didn't think I was going to talk about this, but I used to really like the red pill. I used to read it like quite a bit. Okay. I was like a daily reader, uh, particularly in college uh, when I was kind of deconstructing a lot of my beliefs. I thought, hey. Mm -hmm. You know what? And, and, and I was trying to figure out what why I experienced so much rejection in my life, because contrary to what you might think, and thank you for complimenting me, I appreciate it. Um, I was not a self-confident and uh, I definitely uh, wanted to improve my looks and stuff. And so, yeah, I I totally 100 percent agree with you, Alex. The red pill does have great advice um, and for a particular context for how you can navigate some of these experiences. But it, the buck stops when you start talking about. <laughs> women do this and women do that. Like, yes, we've, I, I, I've definitely had negative experiences with women. I was telling before the show how I, I got stood up by my prom date, you know, like that's the thing that happened to me and that colored my view of women for a long time. But the plural of anecdote mm. is not evidence. Okay. And so the, the biggest problem I have with red pill theory is that if we're, you know, we're, we'll talk about the 80, 20 rule, you know, all this stuff, like, trust me, I, I, I know these things, um, is they're not based on 
real science and real data. They're based on the anecdotes of people. And 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 I I think I could speak for the three hosts of this show by saying that we're not saying that w- all women are perfect. Because certainly we could say as men, men aren't perfect. But like, I what what we want to uh, talk about in terms of a, a broader feminist movement. Or, or a broader kind of revolution of how we understand gender and how we interact with each other. We want to take down the negative stuff that happens to men just as much as the negative stuff that happens to women. You know, this isn't a zero sum game uh, in, in this kind of project that we're interested in in doing. And 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 the red pill kind of stops doing that. It, it, it's not helpful to that end um, because it creates a hierarchy of values between men and women where they can never be equal and never be the same based on some of these principles. Um, Yeah, Alex, it sounds to me like what you're experiencing is purity culture and the idea that we can't talk about sex, we can't talk about dating, we can't talk about what we actually want. And so we have to use this like weird rituals and codes and like, do we go on a daytime date or a nighttime date? And what does it mean if we go on one kind of date or another kind of date? Because we're not allowed to actually talk about things. So on the one hand, I see where you're coming from. But the problem is, even though that's a problem. The answer is not something that has been proven to incite large amounts of violence against women when taken to its extreme. So for me, I would say, yes, I agree. It's a problem that we don't have these conversations and that this isn't something that everyone can just express fully. If I want to go on a date and I want to have daytime sex, I'm going to say that I want to have daytime sex. If I want to go out and I want food, I'm going to say, hey, I'm kind of broke. Do you want to take me out for a meal? And then later I'll get you one after I get my next paycheck. I'm going to say that, right? That's because I'm a decent person. doesn't have to do with my gender. Um, But I do think that going to red pill in in, 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 in particular is a dangerous road to go down because it doesn't actually open the dialogue. It just redirects it into a more harmful, often hyperbolic and stereotypical viewpoint. Mm -hmm. So I see where you're coming from. I disagree with your conclusion, if that makes sense. I do, and I hear you, but that's one of the things I talked about clearing up misconceptions. I could point to video after video. I'm, I'm not lying to you of men interviewing women, coming to different conclusions. And funny, a lot of these videos, you know, people start off, the the men and women on there, uh, two YouTubers go on there, and it it starts off maybe a little heated, it starts off. But by the end, usually they come to a lot of the similar points. I mean, you can pull out a bunch of videos where you saw a particular interview go a particular way, and I, I appreciate how compelling that is. That's what we do here in a lot of ways, you know, uh, not cherry picking specific videos, but we have those types of conversations and work to uh, inform and change minds. So I want to listen to what you're saying, but you have to address some of the fundamental issues with this. You started Mm -hmm. off by comparing it to the Bible and discussing how not everything in the Bible is wrong. You're, You're right. Not everything in the Bible is wrong. But we do this show every week. We do all of the ACA shows to talk about how the ideas in the Bible, when taken and controlling our entire culture, can lead to all kinds of pain and devastation, not just Mm -hmm. for the people in it, but for the rest of us. Absolutely, because not to cut you off, but that's why I slightly alluded to, I'll just say it like this. There was two horrible experiences that happened to me when I was like four or five years old. And it was an uh, older Christian woman that did it, right? Mm. And the only reason I bring it up, I'm not trying to be trigger man. I'm not trying to be Mr. Oh, what he said. The only reason I bring it up to say is a lot of society when it comes to love relationships, and I hate to make it about me, is just a dagger to me. Because yeah. feminists, mm-hmm. it's not all, but certain, fem- certain feminists will say when stuff happens to men, it doesn't count. Once again, that's the extremists on Which their side. Which is horrible and yeah. wrong. Yeah. It's a yeah. dagger. Yeah. You know, people people, will people say are that, fucked people up. People say that only men... People say that only men do these things to children. When I'm a man, I've protected someone. That's a different story. It's whatever. I've protected a young lady. But they'll say, oh, all men do this. But then when a man says women tend to do this, and all of a sudden they're bad. Like, but, a- Alex, I, I appreciate I your feeling and your experiences, but you're, you're proving our point in a lot of ways when we're talking about anecdotal evidence. Let me mm-hmm. encourage you to go back and watch this tape and listen to how many times you say some people say this and all people do that or some people act this way or all people act that way. 
that's just not how science works. And I, I want to kind of leave it there because I do want to get deeper into this interview. But it sounds like you're going through a journey right now. And I, I hope we're asking some questions that you might want to investigate a little bit further. I feel you. But isn't science also based upon looking at general trends? Like the general trend is that most tigers with a, with a calculator, though, right? Them. Like not just as you skim through a web forum, yeah. you it's actually need to calculate reports. statistics. No, no, no. Yeah. I'm not talking yeah. about skimming through. I'm not talking about just skimming through web forums because that happens to everybody. Um, even in politics, you know, you get caught in echo chambers. You find stories. It's recommended stories that are similar to. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about men that I know. I'm not just on trigger stuff, but just. Right. Again, I, I'm, I'm going to, Alex, I'm going to say good night and wrap it up here. But you're talking about men you know. I'm talking about scientists. That's who does science. You know, I'm not saying that we aren't all our own scientists to an extent, but we hire actual professionals to do actual professional research to understand these things. And what we overwhelmingly understand, no matter what metric we come at it from, is that the differences between men and women are culturally constructed in the vast majority of cases and the way you're describing women and sexuality is deeply flawed so i i do what? appreciate you giving us a call but i just wanted to be clear on these points uh and give you just one more last word before we say good night all right thank you very much yeah Alex, and if, if you're on twitter hit me up at objectively dan my dms are open if you have yeah. something you want to talk about with me uh because you mentioned me and, and it seems like you know we've had some similar experiences with life i'm happy to talk to you man so i'll get at that okay yeah. um so that's done there um yeah i just i want to be clear here I, I i understand where alex is coming from there is not information out there for people especially especially for, for men who have been in some way uh, sexually harmed by women, that is a group of people who are often silenced, who are often dismissed, because it is a thing that happens sometimes, but it's not the majority. And it, it it's 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 I can imagine how how painful that must be to only hear you know one side of the story even though that is the vast majority of cases. So I get where he's coming from, and I'm glad that Alex is watching this show because we're trying to be a a healthy and uh, inclusive option to something like the Red Pill mm -hmm. uh, forums, which are trying to do the same thing in a very toxic and unhelpful and harmful way. So yep. uh, Alex, keep watching the show. Call back again if you would like to have a conversation about something else. Um, hit up Dan if you'd like to. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, not going to agree with you on your on your uh, your suggestion there, but I do understand where you're coming from. Yeah, I, I, I just want to say real quick, I'm really glad Alex called in as well because I see so many criticisms of the red pill and, and who these people are that are interested in this. And there's a stereotype that it's like, I don't know, the, the brawny dude in some comedy movie or something. And like, I think it's more akin to Alex's experiences. It's people who are really hurt and people who are really trying to find answers to their experiences. Um, and that's, I think, paints a better picture of who is, is drawn to this stuff. And I think right. if, if it, hopefully that encourages empathy amongst people who are like, you know, having trouble figuring out why are people into this? What, what's convincing Uh, it's, it's, you know, it, it stems from hurt a lot of times. Um, so. Yeah. Exactly. And it also ties into our conversation with Jonathan, which is that um, having people to actually talk with this, uh, talk about this kind of stuff with in a mm -hmm. non-judgmental way who are willing to be resources for you is going to steer you away from having to go to these harmful groups um, who are who are seen to be the only people addressing you personally. So we just need to open the dialogue more, it feels like, and actually counter this by offering good information. Well, you know, there's a reason we have in our like YouTube moderation rules uh, some information about, you know, being very careful in the way we speak about theists and the way we speak about religion, because right. I, I Dan, I know just a tiny bit of your story, but I believe all three of us uh, were in religion at one point. Yeah. And being in a religion 
doesn't make you an idiot. It doesn't mean that you're gullible or stupid or whatever else. I mean, certainly you may not have been asking the right questions, but how do how would you know to? You know, if you're in that <laughs> circumstance, and I I know that the if not the vast majority, then a huge portion of our audience tonight has a similar story. And I, I think it's important as we're talking about all of this, even if you've never been involved in this kind of community, if you found the atheist community of Austin, you certainly know somebody who's been in a community like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love it. 